Good morning, children. Welcome to the e-learning. Today we begin with the first chapter in class 10. Uh, we'll be focusing on current electricity. Current is the word that relates to any ongoing thing, anything that is flowing. For example, ocean current, wind current. In current electricity, we mean the flow of charge. And to be precise, it is rate of flow of charge. So before knowing current electricity, let us understand what is charge all about. Charge is the inherent property of matter by virtue of which it is able to either exert or experience electric forces. Through atomic structure, we do realize that in the nucleus, the central massive positive identity, the protons are packed in the nucleus along with the nucle neutrons. They are immobile. But the electrons in various shells with the definite numbers uh, go to decide the nature of solid material. If in the outermost shell, the number of electrons existing are either one, two or three, then these electrons are mobile and make the solid material a conductor. This is the basic seat of charge. Charge resides on a proton. The magnitude of charge that resides on an electron is equal to the magnitude of charge that resides on a proton. And Therefore, uh, the magnitude, the number of electrons in an atom is equal to number of protons and an atom is electrically neutral. However, the smallest amount of charge that can be present on an electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Some basic properties about charge that we must realize. Number one charges scalar. The plus and the minus sign that we associate with the charge is just to show the difference in the nature of the charge present. Conventionally the charge present on an electron is given as minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and the charge present on a proton is given as plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 this is the smallest charge that it has. The second property, charge is conserved. I hope you know what uh, conservation means. Conservation is that the entire quantity remains constant. Why does it remain constant? It remains constant because it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed. For example, uh, matter is conserved. Total amount of matter in any system remains constant. It can neither be created, cannot be destroyed. Energy is conserved. The total amount of energy in any system, any isolated system remains constant. Energy cannot be destroyed, energy cannot be created. All that we can do with energy is that we can transform one form of energy to the other form. Similarly, momentum is conserved. If there is no external force acting on a system, the total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. And likewise in rotational dynamics, we have total angular momentum conserved. So similarly, charge is conserved. Total amount of charge on any body remains the same. Charge cannot be created. Charge cannot be destroyed. Charge can only be transferred from one form to and in your lower classes, uh, you have understood how do we create charge on a body. One, by friction, rub two bodies together. A glass rod and a cell cap rub together creates opposite charges on the two. Like uh, the cell cap becomes negatively charged and the glass rod becomes positively charged after rubbing. This is because of the transfer of electrons from the surface of the glass to the surface of the silk. Silk gaining electrons 
becomes negatively charged and glass losing charge will become positively charged. That is, on friction, we can create charges on two bodies equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. But however, the, if we keep the glass rod and the cell cap together, it remains electrically neutral. We have not created a charge on the cell cap, nor created a deficiency of charge in uh, the glass rod. We have just transferred the electrons from one body to another body. Charge remains conserved. Since I am discussing how to create charge, I just like to add two more points. The charges can be created also by conduction. Charge from one body will flow to the other body. Charges can be created also by induction. That is reorientation of charges. The next property about charge that we must remember is charge is quantized. Charge is quantized. What do we mean by charge is quantized? Like for example, the people sitting in a room can all can always be quantized. We cannot have two and a half people sitting in a room or twenty and a half people sitting in a room. There will be an integral multiple of the person. So similarly when I say charges in conserved, it means that it exists as an integral multiple of some basic quantity. And what is that basic quantity? That basic quantity is electronic charge, the charge residing on an electron. So we write, so we write Q is equal to N. This means quantization, where N is equal to either 0, 1, 2, and so on. And what is E? The charge present on an electron. 1.6 to 10 to the power minus 19. Here we don't write plus and minus. We are not meaning the charge on a proton or a charge on an electron. We just mean that the smallest amount of charge that can be present. What is this C? Capital C. This is the unit of charge. The SI unit of charge. SI unit of charge. What is SI unit of charge? SI unit of charge is C-O-U-L-O-M-B. Coulomb. Let's see. And this unit is a big unit. C is a big unit. Why is it a big unit? It's a big unit. Like, what do I mean by big unit? Big unit means something like kilometer, if you can understand. Kilometer and centimeter. Centimeter is a small unit of length. It's just about this big. And kilometer, you know. Can you walk for a kilometer? How long the distance is? So we say kilometer is a big unit and centimeter is a small unit of length. Similarly, Coulomb is a big unit of charge. Uh, why is it a big unit of charge? Let's see. One electron carries a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. Let's write it the reverse way. 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb has got only one electron. So one coulomb will have 1 divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 electrons. Let's solve it. Let's solve it. This will become 10 to the power minus 19. Let's write it in the numerator as 10 to the power, not 19. Let's take one more, 110 out and let us write 18. The decimal of 1.6, we write 10. And the 110 that we had taken out from here, we write it here. So that becomes 100. And denominator 6. Let's divide it by 4. So this is 4 and 25. This becomes a 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons. That is to just have one coulomb charge one coulomb charge we need a heap of electrons we need a heap of electrons how many of the order 10 to the power 18 you can understand how big this 10 to the power 18 is as a number so today only about charges next video we'll be learning about current electricity current electricity will begin with current electricity and we'll say it as I is equal to Q by T. Thank you.